I can just tell you that hey, it was a lot you? different, for sure. You um, are? And I probably graduated from this school before your grandparents were born. I graduated in 1950. That was how many years ago? 59 years, wasn't it? But, you know, it was... All right, great. 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 We didn't have a lot of things that you guys have today, but we didn't know the difference. So sometimes I think we were happier because we didn't have as many distractions as you guys have. We were not underprivileged uh, by our standards. Right now, by your standards, we probably would have been would have grown up in a very underprivileged time. I was born on a farm, my, my dad and my mom, and daddy was a farmer, of course, and raised crops like cotton and corn, and he did that with mules. No tractors, was mules. But you know, I'm an animal lover. I was then and I still am. So I really, I really enjoyed the animals on the farm. I did not enjoy picking cotton, I'll have to admit. That was not a fun thing to do. But it was a way of life, and, and as kids, we all did it at that time. Um, I started to school in a white building that was down about where the gym is now, and you've got a picture of that out there on your, on your board. And the other building was part of a grade school also. My first grade, grade class teacher was um, a very sweet person. And my first grade was probably like your kindergarten. Of course, there, was, there wasn't any kindergarten. So we started out in the first grade. And, and I remember that we had um, fish. And in the wintertime, the fish bowl would freeze over and we lost several fish and that was sad for us you know we kind of we kind of liked those fish they, they became part of our school experience there was no indoor bathrooms that was not fun either <laughs> and some people a little bit later rode horses not first graders but but say maybe maybe your age even rode horses and there was a, a, a school bus barn out here where I guess the, the, the uh, portables are now and they would tie their horses up or ponies, not, not big horses but, but ponies up out there and they ride them home. And that was basically because during World War II, if you lived within two miles of the school, you had to either walk, ride a bicycle, or, or um, ride a horse. You know, two miles is a pretty good hike. You think you could walk two miles to school now? Mm -hmm. No, well, it was not fun, but um, I finally got a bicycle. And man, was I ever happy. I got to ride that bicycle. And I'll never forget the day going home that I could pull the hill down this road that, and it was not paved, but going down this road and up that first hill, that that was, I felt like I had arrived when I could ride my bicycle up that hill, because usually I had to get off the push. But that, that was, you know, it was good exercise, and it was safe. That was one thing that was good about those days. Everybody knew everybody, because there were far more people, uh, less people than now. And you knew your neighbors, your neighbors knew you, so you had to behave, you know. Because mom and dad, if mom and daddy were told of you misbehaving in school or anywhere else, uh, well, it was double trouble when you got home. It was just not tolerated uh, by most families, not all, you know. I mean, we had, we had problem kids in school. Of course, I know none of you are problems, right? This is a great Robinson? class this year. Great class, that's wonderful, so. Uh, after, after the war, then the bus came by my house, and I was able to ride the bus then in through, through high school. And one fun thing that I think was important at that time, 
we a PTO. That was a strong PTO. And uh, when I first started to school, the, the buses would run and pick up the parents because we didn't have transportation except for uh, maybe two horse wagons or something like that. So there were no cars that we could jump in and run to school. So the buses would come around and pick up the kids and the parents. And they would come to the old gym down there and have uh, fun night. And we got to know other our parents got to know other parents. Of course, there was there was something good that would come out of that too, because the more parents that knew you, the more you had to behave when you were out and around. Uh, well, I guess that's about as much as as I can think of right off my top of my head. Is there some questions that you would like to ask? Yes. What is your full name? My name is Paula Fern Rux. My maiden name is Rux. My husband's name is Robson. So I'm Paula Fern Rux Robson. Do you have a nickname? Well, I've had several nicknames. Polly was one of them. Uh, Carly was one of them. And my grandpa called me Sally. Why, I don't know. <laughs> yes. What kind of games did you play growing up? Oh, we played Red Rover, Red Rover. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I got picked because I was pretty... Well, let me tell you that whenever I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of toys. I had a faithful dog, and I've got a picture of her with me. And I had a 50-gallon drum, about that long, about that tall. And I rode that thing walked it all around the yard. That was that was one of my favorite toys. And I also had a, a bar across two trees. And I did a lot of push-ups and twirls and I was pretty strong as a kid. So I got picked a lot for Red Rover, Red Rover, and I pretty much could always break through the line. Who were your friends growing up? My best friend was Jackie Hayes. She and I started to first grade together, and we graduated together, and after we graduated, we went to Washington, D.C. together and worked for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Unfortunately, she was killed in an accident, car accident, about mm, something like 30 years ago. Yes? Um, what stories have come down to you about your parents? Excuse me? What stories have come down to you about your parents? Do you have any family stories? Family stories. Well, let's see. Nothing spectacular. Uh, I had a good mom and dad. And, like I said, we were poor financially. But we had food, you know. And, and so, my great, my grandmother was uh, a half Cherokee Indian. But you know, unfortunately, I was not smart enough while she was alive to listen to the stories that she could have told. And uh, most of the stories were lost. Uh, there was some Civil War stories that I could have taken advantage of had I been not too soon old and too late smart. Yes. What events had the most impact on you while you were growing up? What events? Well, I suppose that it would have been World War II and, and the Japanese uh, attacking Pearl Harbor. In fact, we did a program at church just recently. It was incorporated into our Christmas program. And it uh, was gave some history. It was in the uh, 1940s. Uh, just before Pearl Harbor, and the, the, the stories that came out in, in this program that we did at church brought back the memories and, and the uncertainty and the horror, even, even at, you know, at a young age, I realized that. So I guess that would have been the most impact. Back there. Um, uh, what, what is your early, earliest childhood memory? Early childhood memories. 
One of them was my dad had a favorite cat. I mean, it was, you know, those that was our livelihood. Our animals, you know, with the milk cows, we got milk from a cow, and, and the calves were uh, for beef. And I, but I like to play with them. And I had a rope around this calf's neck, and the calf sold on me. You want you know what sold means? Mm -hmm. Chewing. It balked. It balked. It wouldn't go. It wouldn't cooperate. And it fell down, and I thought I had killed it. Well, you know, you couldn't hide a thing like that, which I might have been tempted to. So I went run into my dad and telling him that I killed his calf. I killed his calf. And of course, I was. I just knew I was going to get a, a whipping because that was not uncommon with little switches on the legs, you know, when you misbehave. And so Dad came back, my daddy came up to the barn with me, and there that calf stood, and I'm sure it was laughing at me. So that was a, <laughs> that was a traumatic childhood memory. Yes? How are the holidays How were the holidays, like birthdays and Christmas, celebrated? Well, pretty much basically like, like it is now. We always had a Christmas tree. Dad and I, Daddy would go into the woods and try to find a, a little cedar tree, and he would either dig it up or chop it down and bring it to the house, and, you know, and Santa came to visit. Uh, there was a, Santa was not able to bring very much, but as I remember, I was very appreciative of the things, and I do remember my first tricycle. That was really a red letter day. Yes. How is town different from what it is like when you were a child? How's the town? Maybe some of the businesses or yeah. um, things like that. How's the town itself different? Well, we know there was a movie theater. There was, and the first movie I ever saw, and I don't remember how old I was, was in a little building down where the diner is now. It was, there was a, like a, maybe it was a pool hall on one side, and on the other side was this little theater, not even as big as this room, I don't think, and, you know, a small screen. We probably got TVs that are, that have larger screens. You may have TVs that have larger screens than that was. Um, so that was different. Um, The store where Fence, let's see, where Fence Grocery was, was the GW Justice store, and there was a doctor's office in the back of it, but you could get just about whatever you wanted at the store. And my girlfriend and I would, when we got in high school, we could go across the street, and we usually had a nickel to spend, and we could buy a popsicle, you know, that you, that breaks in two, you know what a popsicle, that has two sticks in it? So every once in a while, we would go over to GW Justice's store and buy a popsicle and break it in two and share it. Uh, let's see. Well, I really, just the businesses, of course, are, are quite different. The street was not paved at all out in front. Do you remember when they paved that? I haven't gotten a date on that. I don't know what the date was. I don't. I, I don't know what the date was. But I would say it would be um, the late 40s. I think by the time I graduated from high school, it was paid. So. And no, we did not have electricity when I was growing up. And we had an outhouse. You know what an outhouse is, yes, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so when I, my senior year in high school, and that was after the war. And that was one reason we didn't have electricity. Because during the war, everything ceased that was not directly related to supporting the troops. So my last year in high school, we did get electricity. Yes, honey. Did, did you have family trouble growing up? Did I have family trouble? Did I have family chores? Yes, ma'am, I sure did. Um, I had a cow that I had to milk at night. I did not milk her in the morning. Her name was Old Bloss, and she was my pet, and I milked her every night, and if my girlfriend, Jackie, came to spend the night with me, she'd get on one side, 
Have you ever seen a cow milked? Yes. Do you know what it's like? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they have they have teats and they have that bag, and and there's four of them, and sometimes some little ones in the back, but they don't give milk. So she would get on one side and I would get on the other, and that she you don't do that on a lot of cows, but this was my pet cow, and she would let us do that. So that was one of my chores. Yes. Um, what was your favorite thing to do for fun? Ah. Well, we did a lot of spending the night with friends and uh, playing ball and after we got bicycles, riding our bicycles and, and after a while I got a, a pony, a horse, and that we spent time riding uh, our horses and things like that. Yes? What was your favorite sport? Favorite sport? I like to play basketball after I got older, but I wasn't tall enough to be of any, uh, you know, do any great things. And I was a pretty good hitter with baseball. I, I, could, I could slug a ball pretty hard. So I guess that would be my favorite. Yes, hon? Do you remember the old jail? The old jail. Now, actually, that was before my time, I think. I know where the building is, you know, and, and I was told that it was, what they call it, the calaboose? I think the calaboose. I've heard that, yes. Yeah, and, and what else? Who's that? Yeah. I've heard that one, I heard too. that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if it was a jail in my childhood, uh, I, I was not really aware of it. But see, I live two miles out in the country. And when you've only got a two-horse wagon to travel in or on foot, you don't you don't travel around and see as much as you know be as aware of as much as you guys are able to do now. Yes. Do you remember any fads from your youth? Any what? Fads. Fads. Popular hairstyles fads. or clothes. Oh, hon, that's been <coughs> around since my mother's generation. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I wore braids. I had braids that I braided on each side and pulled them up across the top. A lot of people did that. Um, I don't remember ponytails. I don't remember whether girls wore ponytails. Uh, boys always had haircuts. They, uh, most of the boys had short haircuts, as I remember. Yeah. Yes. Did you receive an allowance? Well, after I got older, I did, and I think my first allowance was a nickel a week. That's the reason my girlfriend and I would have the popsicle. No, I take that back. It was a quarter a week. A quarter a week, because it's five cents a day. Yeah. Yes. Um, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have any famous or infamous people in your family? <sighs> Let's see. No, I don't. I guess not. I'm pretty lucky. No, no, uh, no hoodlums and <laughs> nobody that's famous or nobody that's in <coughs> uh, Who hasn't asked a question? Okay. <coughs> Somebody asked about the holidays. Yeah, pretty much the same way. Birthdays, uh, you know, mother usually managed to, to do a cake and, and things like that and, uh, on, a, on a birthday. So it's pretty much the same way as we do now. And for that number nine. Yeah. Uh, yes. What was your favorite thing to do for fun? Somebody's asked that when y'all need to pay attention. Okay, thank you. What was your profession and why did you choose it? What was my profession? Well, I tell you. I got out of high school on Friday. And I went to work in Gadsden on Monday morning. Uh, I was really, you know, I thought I had to get off the farm. That was my life's ambition at that point, was to get off the farm and away from picking cotton. But um, I, it didn't, I didn't have choices. I didn't have the choices for going to school. I did get a scholarship to a college in South Alabama. But it was just for tuition. 
and there was no way that my family could have afforded, uh, you know, a, a place to stay, a dorm room and that type of thing, so it, that was not an option. Sneed College was available, but I didn't have transportation, and my family could not have afforded to buy me a car, and there was no buses running like later. There were buses that ran to Sneed and picked kids up. Um, so my ambition was just to go to work, and that's what I did. And I, I, I worked uh, for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and I met my husband in Washington, D.C. He was in the military, so from there we traveled all over, and, and you know, I did different things. I even, I even worked as a uh, math lab instructor in, in Rochester, New York City School District. And I think that was my favorite. I found that I really would have enjoyed being a teacher because I did have, you know, I did get a taste of what it was like to work with kids, and, and I enjoyed that very much. Yes? Uh, did you all eat together as a family? Yes, absolutely. Always. No distractions. Yes? What types of food did you eat? Well, we grew most of our food, um, so green beans were a favorite, and black-eyed peas. You like black-eyed peas? That was something that was grown uh, in, in my mother's garden, and of course turnips, turnips and turnip greens, that's probably not something many of you like. <laughs> uh, but think about it, if you were growing up and you couldn't just go to the grocery store when you got hungry. That's they right. They didn't have canned foods on the shelf. Most all the foods you would have eaten would have been fresh food or something you maybe canned or saved at home. So what you grew up eating were the foods that you usually would get a taste for and enjoy eating. You ate, when you're hungry, you know, you, you, you learn to, to like whatever's there. <laughs> Uh, who have, have you have you asked? I'm trying to make sure I don't ask the same one over and over. If you know. what was your question, honey? Do you do you know any stories about events that happened in town? I think one person told us about turkey trots, and they said that actually happened in Crossville a few times. Are there any other events that they had around town? Somebody told us they oh, had a, a picnic. Oh, okay. Yes, here on the school ground. Over in that area, over there, there were trees. And every, I think about every year, there would be a small, what they call picnic. And there would be, uh, well, I remember the merry-go-round. And somebody would make fresh lemonade that you could buy. Um, and every once in a while, there would be a little circus. And usually that was out on the corner where the gym is. There was a playground out there and a tennis court where the, where the elementary gym is now. And every once in a while there would be a small circus would come. And that was always fun. We didn't, you may have been to the uh, Ringland Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, which in, I know it comes to Huntsville. But uh, it was nothing like that. But it was it was interesting for us. Yes. Who did the cooking? At my house, my mom. My dad was not a cook, not at all. <laughs> I remember one time he tried to make what he called hoe cake, and I think it was something that his mother had made, and I think that came from her Indian heritage. And that was one thing I could not eat, was his whole cake. So, I don't remember him ever cooking it, but once. Yes? Did your family have special traditions? Special traditions. Ah. Uh, Well, now, you know, I really can't think of anything other than, than the Christmas celebrations. You know, that was a family tradition. Um, we seen Mother and Dad always put fruit 
in our stocking, in my stocking. I was an only child. I did not have any brothers or sisters. And, uh, but that fruit was something that was a family tradition to always put in your stocking. Um, no, I, 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 I really can't think of any that would, would have been specific to just our family, limited to our family. Yes? And what year were you born? I was born in 1932. So I just missed the Great Depression. I was not old enough to be aware of it. Yes? What was school like for you as a child? Larger classes, I think. Uh, of course, there were no, there were no recordings, uh, nothing that, um, no videos to watch or, or television or, you know, anything like that. Everything had to come from the teacher uh, in the way of paper and pencil. Um, that was pretty much it. Yes. Um, when when were you born? In 1932. Where? Where? Um, two miles that direction, and that's where I live now. Not in the same house, but my mother. It goes back to my great grandfather, and it was a family farm, and my mother was born on that farm in the house that's still there, and. I was born there, and now my daughter is living there. And we built a house next door, and that's where my husband and I live. But we've only been there um, in the, about the last 15 years after he retired. I've got a question. Yes. What did you do for the FBI? I was a fingerprint technician. Uh, and, and at that point, if you've ever seen any of the old movies, I had that glass that hooked around my finger, and you looked at the fingerprints that were had been taken and you they cat were categorized by the number of loops and whirls and uh, that was my first first job and then I worked as a uh, a clerk and I did typing. Alright Damien, one or two more. I think we've asked them about all. What what was your mom and dad's name? My my father's name was Joel Thomas. But he went by Doc, the O C K, and my mother's name was Gladys. Where did you attend school? Here. I started in school here and graduated in 1950 from this school. All right, are there any more questions? I think we've asked just about all of them, but if you've got one more, Joel, this is the last one. Did you save your money or spend it? When you got a when you got an allowance, you're gonna have to be more specific. Yeah, uh, I tried to. I was encouraged to save it, but I remember one time I took an allowance and I went to the store and I spent the whole thing on it, a little on a little purse to put my allowance in, and I didn't save any of it. I didn't get any allowance the next week, so I had the purse, but I didn't have anything to put in it. But after I got older, uh, Daddy would pay me. For picking cotton, and I would—that was what I bought my school clothes with, uh, you know, for the for the next year. You got one more, sweetie. Here is that. What was your house like? What was my house like? Um, they didn't have electricity. She didn't have any electricity. electricity. And an outhouse, no indoor bathroom. And we had a a, a heater in one of the bedrooms, but it was not mine, you know, a heater, a wood, coal burning. Um, you know what coal is, maybe, maybe not. How kind of like, coal is kind of like the charcoal you put yeah. in a barbecue grill. Mm -hmm. They didn't burn wood, but they burned little pieces of coal, only it's a little bit smaller and burns a little bit longer than what they put in barbecue grills. Yeah. And uh, I put, whenever I went to bed at night when it was real cold, mother would put a a flat iron. A piece, you know what a flat iron is? <laughs> okay, it's a thing they used to put on the stove to heat to iron clothes. And that would get hot and they'd wrap it in a towel and put it in my bed.
So when I went to bed, at least I'd have something warm to put my feet on. <laughs> and that felt so good. Um, one person told us they remembered a, a Civil War Centennial celebration. Do you ever remember anything? I do like not that? remember that. Mm -mm. I remember my, my mother telling a story of during the Civil War, I guess it was her grandparents. They were driving two mules that they really prized because they were like twins. And uh, they got so somewhere down below our house and they were taken away from them. So, but that's the only Civil War memory that I, that, of course that was a little bit before her time mm -hmm. too. So. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I think I have the only album uh, that Crossville School did not have, the, the yearbook. Uh -huh. And it, we have all the copies at the library. I know we were looking through those, um, the historical committee people, when we were um, there one day. Uh huh. We were looking through some of those, and I was very really surprised. Um, I didn't know they had them going back. At the library, had them going back that far. We got them from the school. Because they were just yeah. mm -hmm. People were just taking them as they got out after they changed over. And yeah. We had somebody, I always wonder what happened to them. I'm glad somebody ended up. We need to uh, have a place to put them that is uh, secure. Yeah. Because she you know, the library is burned. Some type of a little safe or something. Yeah, safe. Um, at one point, we thought about checking the city hall to see if they let us store them from that safe. But whether or not they would be safe there, somebody yeah. might decide, you know, to clean up that safe and throw everything out. So if a, you know, the historical society can come up with them. A committee can come up with something, um, I'm sure, that will be safe and
Oh, 50th class reunion? 50th class reunion. Oh, okay. Class of what year did you graduate? 49. Uh, 50th, sorry. Oh, okay. It's 50th, 50th class. Okay. That was, yeah. Graduated in 50th. 50th, so that would have been the 2000. Thank <laughs> you. 